I'm the Scale Model Geek. In this video, I create a rusted ship in the middle of a wasteland, and I also have a paint mystery to solve. For this diorama, I used the Revell 1 to 142 scale North Sea fishing trawler. It was the only type of ship that suited my needs that I could find at the time. It originally released back in 1970. It's a pretty old kit, which means it's pretty awful. But before we go any further, check this out. Let's check out my sponsor for today, which is World of Warships, which is a free-to-play naval warfare game that's available on PC. The great thing about this game is that there is new content released every month, and this time, Big Whiskey has made it to World of Warships. You command the power of the USS Wisconsin and enjoy the unique gameplay experiences in World of Warships' stunning 12v12 arenas. There are over 20 ports to choose from, and 10 of them are recreated based on historical harbours and port towns. The graphics are just top notch and have over 40 unique maps with dynamic weather and the latest updates in stunning water effects and textures. These conditions challenge your gameplay and tactics you use. You get a variation of ship classes to choose from, with ships such as aircraft carriers, cruisers, submarines, destroyers and battleships. You can set up battles as a lone wolf or engage with your friends. The game link is in the description and you can use promo code WISCONSIN and receive a huge starter pack that includes 500 doubloons, 2 million credits, 10 days of premium account time, token USA 4 and double the amount of American cruiser containers. So make sure you use the promo code WISCONSIN and get those amazing extras. Huge thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Of course, this kit being quite an old kit, like I just mentioned back from 1970, the parts are really clunky, lots of flash in it, you know, pretty much what I've come to expect from Revell and their older kits. So, bit of glue, bit of sanding, bit of taping and all that type of work, I was able to get it to close to what I needed to. Here I'm creating some hull damage, mainly just to create some visual interest, so I marked out where I need to cut away the piece of the hull and just using a cutter tool on the Dremel. I scored it, snapped it, and uh, did a bit of sanding, some filing, just to get it to closer to the shape that I need. And this is just to seal up the bulkhead, so you can't see straight inside the ship. And a bit of glue and just plonked it right in. This took a couple of attempts, but I got it in there. Now I'm using some of this styrene to create the framing that's on the inside of the hull. And I thought this might give it a really interesting look, like a dead animal in the desert. You know, when it's all dried out and decomposed and just the ribs are showing. And I was really happy with the way this came out, really straightforward. Cut up some little pieces and then glued them in place. And because nothing seems to fit quite nicely in this kit, bit of glue, bit of masking tape, and of course the joints are rubbish, so you have to use a bit of putty to fill those areas up as well. None of this is hard, the usual modelling stuff. And just to show you how bad the flash is, check this out. That's basic on the majority of the pieces. I had this idea of a rusty ship just sticking out in the middle of a wasteland and the contrasting colours of the rusty ship and the desert sands. And of course I'll have a handful of figures just to give it scale. These cranes really show the lack of detail in the parts. These two figures they do not look like sailors, they look like Daleks with uh, some feet. Terrible detail. So stiff and unnatural. But I will be redoing the figures and 3D printing them, so that's all good. And with this, whatever it is, I had to thin it out quite a bit because it was just so clunky. Just looked out of place. The whole ship's going to be totally covered in rust, so it wasn't too much of a problem, though I wish I had finer detail, like these handrails. They also need a lot of cleaning up and thinning out. I'm a big fan of the post-apocalyptic theme. I love the whole texture of it, the look, the feel, and the warning that it gives us. Right here, just to add a bit more detail to the ship, I'm drilling out the portholes. Now it's time to start painting the base coat. I'm using this German red-brown from Vallejo. 
a nice even base coat of this and not forgetting the inside of that hull as well where the big tear is and then a mottling of this light rust again from Vallejo and this is just to break up the monotone effect of the German red brown I'll be doing the hairspray chipping effect on this ship and I just sprayed a whole bunch of hairspray into this little drop bottle and I just pour that straight into my airbrush when I need it now I'm doing a nice thick even coat the thicker the coat the more chipping you'll get I did need to do a bit of masking for the ship because I had a variety of other colors starting off with this black down the side of the uh, trawler I then masked up the black because the top end was another color again and need to be a sort of a brown color so I end up picking this burned flesh from Vallejo and then the deck got a nice even coat of this color now for this scale I don't usually use straight out white I kind of use like a gray white and off white because the scale makes it too harsh to have it just white and then some of that yellow green for the bow and the stern of the ship please don't attack me for my terminology because I know nothing about ships like I know nothing about trains oh turned out to be locomotives anyway there it is that's what it looks like all blocked out I just need to do a bit of painting for the midsection there but otherwise I'm ready to do some decaling so using the decals supplied a bit of uh, warm water and I got straight to it again pretty straightforward nothing special here now for the chipping now this technique is really fun to do using a bit of warm water and a soft brush I dampen the areas that I have the hairspray there that softens it and it just peels off by using a toothpick once that's all done first wash is this dark brown and I just absolutely covered it with this stuff then on to the second pass which was some of this rust from Vallejo once again also flooded the ship with this uh, wash and then the final pass was this dark rust and again from Vallejo this time around I mainly concentrated on the edges of the ship now get ready the paint mystery is about to begin I always give my models a coat of this matte varnish and for some reason this time it actually went gloss and yes before you say anything I did shake the can literally for almost 15 minutes I thought I had a dodgy can of spray so I grabbed the second can that I had and I used that and that also came out gloss so I thought the next thing I need to do is do another test piece so I tested the paint on this zombie figure that I painted ages ago and that came out perfectly flat I figured there must be some type of reaction with the wash procedure that I did off camera I ended up using the Tamiya flat but that just is never flat enough compared to what I used to get out of the Vallejo paints the mystery continues stick around using a combination of this pigment as well as the glaze medium I uh, mix that up to create a bit of a rust texture and just using a piece of sponge I just dab it into areas and that's like I said it gives me that texture that I don't really get out of paints because it's a rusty ship it needs some streaking rust so I'm using some of these streaking pencils from AK now what I prefer to do is wet the tip of the pencil and then use a fine brush and then brush it on then using a damp brush and I then blend it I just find I have more control doing it this way over the streaks now onto the teeny weeny little figures that I printed up in my 3d printer with figures this tiny I tend to use the zenithal lighting technique and that's basically painting the figures a flat black as the first coat and once that was all completed and I think I had five figures in this diorama I then used some of this Liquitex titanium white and using the airbrush I sprayed from one direction and that gives you your highlights and also your shadows really simple and very effective if you haven't already smash that like button subscribe to the channel and hit your notifications button and of course share the video your support is always greatly appreciated and now onto our wasteland so I'm using a piece of XPS foam which I've already covered in PVA glue as well as painted the edges black I then mark out where I need to cut out a recess so the ship sinks into the desert sand I then use a hot knife and slice out the areas that I don't need 
If you are using a hot knife on XPS foam, make sure you wear a mask because this stuff's pretty toxic and it's, yeah, it's really smelly stuff. I then used a small measuring ruler just to dig out the foam. Now, right here you may be asking yourself, hey geek, why is your ship gone glossy again? Well, I kind of thought off camera, you know, I've sealed it with the Tamiya flat. That may have protected all my undercoats of washers and I might give this Vallejo flat a bit of a go again. And as you can see, it still went glossy. Still a mystery. Stick around, it continues. To fill up the gap between the foam and the ship, I used some tin foil. Just scrounge it up in a little uh, sausage and just pushed it into place. And this just makes the transition between the surface and the ship a lot more realistic. Lately I've started using some of this uh, tile grout instead of the usual plaster of Paris because mixed up with water I like to finish it leaves it gives it a more grainy more sandier finish to it but with this mix I think I made a mistake and didn't add enough water because it started to harden very very quickly so as I was using the spatula to spread it the surface became a lot more smoother than what I wanted it to be. My first attempt at trying to fix that, I used a wide brush to uh, rough up the surface, but that didn't quite give me the look I needed. So I figured I'll have a think about it and come back to it. So next one was the ship rigging. So I used some of this uh, filament from my FDM printer and then uh, some of this rust paint to uh, give it the color that I need. And then a bit of super glue to hold it into place. And right now you're probably thinking, whoa there geek. How come your ship's all flat again? Okay, let me explain to you what had happened off camera. On the left is the normal can that I usually buy of the matte varnish from Vallejo. On the right is the new can that I just recently purchased. And if you look carefully, you can see they're both the same product number. I had an idea off camera. What I did, I grabbed the old can that I, obviously you can see that I still had stuck it in some hot water to increase the pressure of the air inside the can and I was able to get about two coats of paint to cover the ship and lo and behold the whole thing went totally flat the problem turns out it wasn't in my process of painting the ship but actually the new batch of paint in the new cans that have caused all the problems but the mystery still is why did it work on the zombie figure? Leave a comment, let me know what you think because I'd love to know, Vallejo, if you see this, what is causing this issue? Anyway, back to the build. Now to solve my terrain issue, I just grabbed some of that tile grout, spread it all over the base uh, with a spoon and just thinned it out with a soft brush. And then once I was happy with that, I gave the whole thing a complete flood of some water. This issue was really fortuitous because I really loved the look of it. It looked like sand, uh, that desert wasteland type feel to it, and it also adhered to the base really well. And now it's time to give it a bit of color. So I'm using some of this raw sienna acrylic paint, and I've had this bottle for like 30 years now laying around, and seemed to work really well. I added a lot of water to the paint to make sure it was really thin so when I applied it to the surface it soaked into the tile grout. During this process I wasn't shy at all at how much wash to apply. I just flooded the whole base. And left it to dry, it needed to dry for about 24 hours and it came out fantastic. Loved the final look of it. The colour is wonderful. And now to bring out more detail, I use a combination of this earth and the dark sand. This is dry brushing paint from Ammo and a really heavy dry brush uh, on the top surfaces of that terrain. And like I said, this technique brings out so much detail and it adds that final touch and gives it so much depth. Now a bit of super glue to add those five figures to the terrain. And it was at this point I realized it's still missing something. It needs more foliage to it. So I'm using some of this coarse turf, which is an earth color, and just a bit of PVA glue to hold it into place, and also the fine turf. And this gives me some dead foliage around the ship. Even with all the dramas with the paint and the surface texture of that terrain, it turned out really good. I was happy with it. 
I think we should go and check out the glamour shots now. Even though I had a couple issues with the build, it was still a lot of fun to do. Let me know what your thoughts are during my issue with the paints. Leave a comment below. Make sure you use the promo code WISCONSIN and get those amazing extras. Huge thank you to Wilder Warships for sponsoring this video. And in the meantime, go and check out these other videos. It was great having you. See you in the next video.